To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time of war, and a time of peace. As said in mine heart, Elohim shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose, and for every work. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8, and verse 17. Purpose. The word purpose means to intend, to design. This is the dictionary definition. That which a person sets before himself as an object to be reached or accomplished. Aim. I say goal. That wasn't in the definition, but that says goal. The object for which something exists or is done. Now there are short-term and long-term goals or purposes. And it's funny, because a lot of the songs and stuff today was like touching on purpose. Some of the things that Michael was saying was touching on purpose. And we kind of, and there's nothing wrong with our purposes and our setting goals. And, you know, we have short-term goals and we have long-term goals. And sometimes we set out because our life is so busy, we have goals and purpose just for the day. And if we can make it, get all those purposes done that we set out to purpose, we have had a good day. And sometimes, you know, those goals are for a week or a year. You know, we set these purposes up. You know, and one of the questions usually asked in an interview is, where do you see yourself in five years or ten years? Filling out what you think of your purpose. You know, most of the time, I don't know about you all, but I can't ever answer that question. Because, you know, I can't think that far ahead. I got no purpose that far ahead. If I can make it through the week, the year, we've done good. But the purpose, where I'll be in five years from now. These purposes are what gives meaning to your life. And sometimes we don't think much about our purpose. And I'm going to focus on Denise. Of course, her testimony, she's out in the world now. But, you know, just being a mom, you know, is that all there is to my life? You know, we get in these places and we'll look and say, is that all there is? You know, whether it's a marriage or maybe you built a dead-end job. And every once in a while you'll be like, is this all there is to my life? Not having a purpose or thinking little of your purpose leads people to make bad choices. Even suicide. Or murdering those who they feel have distorted their purpose. You know, like having a baby when not prepared can cause a woman to hate and or despise her child and the man. The man to despise the woman and the child. This is very common out there. No one wants to take blame for his or her own actions. So when you're watching the news and you wonder why or how that could happen, most likely the reason is they lost their purpose. They've lost their sense of purpose. Now, obviously, purpose is very important. As Yahweh said, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. In the above scripture, we have the wisest man who walked the earth next to Yeshua. Recognizing that everything, everything has a time and a time to every purpose. This is one of the laws of Yahweh that has 
nothing to do with whether you believe or not. It is a natural course that Yah himself set in order and none can alter. If you do know that there are some laws that Yahweh has set on course and it has nothing to do with whether you believe in him or not believe in him. Reciprocity. Is that how you say that word? You reap what you sow. That's for anybody. That's across the board. It has nothing to do with whether you're a believer or you believe in Yahweh or not believe in Yahweh. It's a natural law that Yahweh put in motion. You will reap what you sow. Period. This is the same kind of law. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time to be born. There's a time for peace. There's a time for war. It's a natural course of things that Yahweh put in order. And everybody, whether they serve Yahweh, know Yahweh, don't serve Yahweh, is feeling in light. Yahweh is a purposeful God. And everything he does has purpose. Now, the concordance definition for purpose used here in Ecclesiastes 3 means pleasure. Concretely, a valuable thing. So if we reread to everything, there is a season and a time to every pleasure. Yahweh has designed a course that when followed gives the purpose in your life true fulfillment. So as a couple of examples, I have a child. I could even use me for an example. There's this natural course of life that a child is born. You teach them. They learn how to walk. You know, we go through toilet training, go to school, you know, learn the ABCs. It's called just this natural course. And, you know, and when they finish school, maybe parent is already, you know, Misha, what college do you want to go to? Jane, are you thinking about college? What profession do you? You're trying to instill in them purpose. See, it's necessary to have purpose in your life. So you begin to try to instill in them purpose. What career would you like to have? Something that they can aim for, a purpose that would drive them to further their education, if that's what their purpose is, for some job that they need an education, and all these things. And then we add into the natural course of things is, you know, you go to school, you finish school, you work, you get married, you have babies, you know, in that process. So when we don't do it like that, we mess up that order. And then life is not smooth. You know, not that it's perfectly smooth when you do it right, but it's worse. You give yourself more struggle, more financial struggle, more emotional struggle, the whole course. So those of us who have had our babies out of order, you know, and now we're wrestling with that thing about, you know, if I wouldn't have had this child, I could have done this. If I wouldn't have got mixed up with this man, I could have did this. You know, and now we're blaming, you know, it's your fault that I'm indebted, or it's your fault that my life is hard. If I didn't have you, it wouldn't be like this. A young man finishes high school, he gets his little job, he buys his car, he's putting his time and effort into his car. I look at that as kind of the natural course. It's kind of in a guy to get a car, you know, do stuff with a car. It's part of gaining his independence. But then a baby comes along that's not supposed to be there at that time, and now you've got to give your money to the baby, and you've got to neglect your car, and you're all frustrated because you altered the purpose. You've altered the direction. See, Yowie said there's a time to every pleasure. So there's a time for that pleasure. There's a purpose for it, and there's a time for it, and a time for our sexual pleasure would be in marriage and for procreation as well to have them babies. And then, you know, we'll get more fulfillment from our life when we follow the purposes of Yowie. 
Now, having goals and having purpose is fine. It's necessary. It actually is necessary to give value to yourself. You know, we have to have some sort of self-worth. And so purpose gives us that. But we have to understand as believers that Yahweh has purpose. And he has a purpose for you. So not only is Yahweh a purposeful Elohim and that everything he does has purpose, he has purpose for every child of his. Just as a parent, maybe we see children who really like art and we instill, you should be an artist and you should go, maybe they're good with building, and you should go and be an artist. We're trying to instill in them this purpose, looking at their talents and drive them towards this purpose. Yahweh is the same type of parent. He has purpose for us, for each one of us. The problem is lining ourselves up with the purpose of Yahweh, letting our purpose fit in to Yahweh's purposes. Thou art worthy, O Yahweh, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now, in Ecclesiastic, the word purpose meant pleasure. Pleasure, in this verse from Revelation 4.11, means a determination, specifically purpose. So here, Yahweh is saying it's for, and for thy, you know, the angels are singing, O thou art worthy, O Yahweh, because it's for thy determination. You determined they are, and because of what you determined, what you purposed, was everything created. So we have Solomon in his wisdom saying, there is a time, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose. And in Revelation, the angel is declaring that all of creation, everything that was created, has a purpose. Yahweh has specifically determined its direction. Now, also notice that in Ecclesiastic, as it reads, it says, there is a thing, to everything there is a season, and to every, a time to every purpose under the heaven. So he's talking about us, down here, under the heaven. So Yahweh is worthy to receive glory and honor because he is purposed. He's given us purpose. So even when I'm in that dead-end job, that when I look at it in itself, and I feel, is this all there is? In Yahshua, I should be reassured that there is a purpose for where I'm at. There's a purpose why I'm here in this job. There's a purpose why, you know, I'm a housewife. There's a purpose why I'm what I am and what I'm doing and where I'm at in life. There's a purpose for it. And that's going to give my life direction. And so we got to, sometimes when we're looking at people on the outside, and they're struggling going forward and getting on with their life, it's their lack of purpose. It's their not feeling that they're meeting their potential or going in the direction that they desire to go in for whatever reason. But Yahweh gives us purpose. Yahshua had purpose. When we look at Yahshua's life, and I mean, I could have pulled out a bunch of scriptures, so I'm trying to be short. 1 John 3, 8 says, He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Elohim was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And this purpose here means intent, firmly directed or fixed. So for the intent, for this intent, for this reason, the Son of Elohim is manifested. Why? That he might destroy the works of the devil. So when Yahshua, you know, we know he came to save us. That was one of the purposes. He came, and his intent was that he may save the world. You know, through his blood and whosoever would believe would be saved. 
but he also came to destroy the works of the devil. 2 Timothy 1.9, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Messiah, Yeshua, before the world began. Now this purpose, and I have a couple of the scriptures focusing on this purpose, because when I read the definition from the concordance for this purpose, it just really caught my attention. It means a setting forth intention, specifically the showbread as exposed before Yahweh. So this is a revealing, you know, and actually give a little bit more to the tabernacle of Yahweh, the purpose of the showbread. It's open on the table. It's not covered. It's exposed before the presence of Yahweh. So in this 2 Timothy, he's saying, but according to his own purpose, his own exposing, his own setting forth, which was given us in Messiah, Yeshua, before the world began. So we're saved and have a holy calling that's been revealed in Yeshua. And those, you know, as we continue our studies, we can see how Yahweh made provision in the Old Testament, but all the revelation was in Yeshua. You know, all the answers to the whys and the hows were in Yeshua. So Yahweh exposed himself in Yeshua. He removed the veil. You know, and even in the tabernacle, you have the veil that separated them from being able to come directly into the presence of Yahweh. And upon Yeshua's death, we read that the veil was rent from top to bottom. Yahweh rent the veil. Paul says to come boldly to the throne of grace. So we have, Yahweh has exposed himself to us through Yeshua. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3. Paul writes very long sentences. So I want to make sure I get the whole thought. I'm going to focus on verses 9 through 11. And Paul's talking about who he is, how he shared, you know, how by revelation, Yah made known to him these things, and he's been called to be a minister of the word. And in verse 8, he says, Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, Paul's talking about himself, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Messiah, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in Elohim, who created all things by Yeshua Messiah, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of Elohim, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Messiah, Yeshua our Lord. So we see, just what I said before, that Yeshua, through Yeshua, Yahweh exposes himself. And this was the intention from the very beginning. From the very beginning, Yahweh wanted to be exposed to man. He wanted to be accessible to man. And because of sin, the separation occurred. And so Yahweh had already, because it's an eternal purpose, a purpose that's been from the beginning and it's eternal forever, that internal purpose is so that Yahweh could be exposed to us. He was hidden. Man couldn't see him. He was mysterious. There was mystery that was revolved around him. You know, why do we have to do it this way? Why do you bring a sheep? Why this? Why that? How do you do the sacrifice? What's the purpose? What's the purpose? What's the purpose? It was a mystery. It was covered. It was hidden. You know, and even Paul talks about even still we see through glass darkly. So even though Yahweh's been exposed to us through Yeshua, it's still not a clear picture. You know, but as we get closer and closer to Yeshua and become more and more like him, Yahweh is more and more exposed. 
you know, like Sister Denise was talking about in her testimony, the more and more you begin to, out of necessity, I mean, she made it out of necessity. I knew that since I was going back in the world to do my job, I needed to be prayed up. I needed to be watchful. I needed to be careful. And so she got in the Word. She began to pray more out of necessity. And now we begin to be able, she's able to recognize the enemy as he's approaching instead of after she's in the trap. You know, which, you know, some of us get in the trap and it's like, oh, it was a trap. I didn't see that. But sometimes we do see things. And it's based on how much is Yahweh exposed. Brother Lloyd was talking about when you're in the light, you can see. You know, I used to like read in the dark. TV light worked for me. But now that I'm old, I need the light on. Even if the computer screen was like, you don't need the, I need the light so I can see. You know, we need the light. When you have the light, you see much better. So, and that's, and that's through the Word. You can see that, that Yahshua talks about, he is the light. Also a bright light. You know. And then Yahshua said that he's made us light to go forth in a dark world. So the purpose, Yahweh is being exposed in this. So the, according to the eternal purpose that which he purposed. It's an eternal purpose which he purposed. Which is appointed or banded together, exercised, fulfilled, ordained. So Yahweh has exposed, it's an according to the eternal intention, exposing. Which he appointed or banded together, fulfilled or ordained in Yahshua, our Savior. So the whole of Yahweh. You know, when Paul talks about Yahshua is the embodiment of the whole Godhead. This is, he had something. He had a revelation. He understood that if you can get this Yahshua and receive Yahshua in your life. And be one with Yahshua. You are going to be revealed Yahweh the Father. Yahshua himself said, if you see me, you see the Father. Now we don't understand. We've got this oneness thing and we think he's like him. And so, you know, in mannerisms and how he handles situations. But he's saying a lot more than just if you see me, then you'll recognize Yahweh. Paul had that revelation about in Yahshua is the wholeness of Yahweh. Here in Ephesians, he's making it in another statement. He's saying, and then who is he talking to? He's saying, my purpose, Paul's saying, my purpose, why Yahweh called me, is that I may share the gospel. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Which from the beginning of the world has been hid in Elohim. It was hid in Yahweh. Who created all things by Yahshua Messiah. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of Elohim. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Yahshua Messiah. So Yahweh's, through Yahshua, his purpose is not just to be exposed to us personally. But to the church as a whole. To the principalities and to the powers. That Yahweh is exposed. He's not a mystery anymore. To make all to see what the fellowship of the mystery. So you can see past the mystery. The purpose, the intent. Yahweh has a plan for our lives. It used to be a show that, a music show, gospel music, Christian music show. Years ago, and that was how he ended every show. 
to tell the people, remember that YAH has a purpose for your life. We have got to realize that. When Yeshua said, I come to give you life, and that more abundantly. See, you have purpose. You know, people outside of YAH have purpose, you know, that they've intended for themselves. But he says, I come to give you that, and that more abundant. Because now you're going to enter into the purposes of Yahweh. You're going to become a part of the eternal purposes. So even when your life and the purposes you set are not what you expect them to be, you can't figure out what they are, or you've forgotten. You know, sometimes we get old, and we think that now our purpose doesn't exist anymore. We fulfilled everything there is to be fulfilled, and there's no purpose anymore for us. You know, and Denise preached a message on that to our elderly saints in the church one time. You know, that there's still purpose for them. So even as we go on and we reach our little goals, you know, say I set out to be a doctor. So I went through school. I did good. I said I picked my specialty. I'm there. Now what? Well, you set other purposes along the way. You know, and those are fine and necessary. But at the same time, we need to line our purposes up with the purposes of Yahweh. Yahweh is going to give our purposes and put them in perspective so that when we hit these places in life, especially like the world does, where people now feel they have no need to continue to live, we don't hit those because there's this greater purpose for us. Even if we don't understand it or know what it is or what course it's going to take, we know there's some purpose to our life. There's some purpose. You know, and I thank Yahweh for that. You know, can you see? Abraham understood. Yah has a purpose for me. I know what it is. You know, he just comes to him and says, pack up and leave. All right. Where are we going? He didn't even ask that question. He just packed up and followed Yahweh as he led and believed that as each thing that transpired, there was a purpose. Yahweh had purpose for him. Same thing with all the other saints or examples we have in the scripture. David believing when Samuel came and anointed him as a king. Well, there was already a king on the throne. And Samuel saying, Yahweh said, you king. David's like, okay. But he waited till the purpose time of Yahweh be established. He didn't go into Saul and say, you got to go now because it's my turn to be on the throne because Yahweh said so. He understood the purpose of Yahweh. That you wait on the purpose of Yahweh. You wait for the time. See, a time. We got to remember this. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. So just because you get the plan doesn't mean it's time yet. You wait for it to. In the fullness of time, Yeshua came. When it was the right time. And had he come any sooner or any later, nothing would have worked right. It had to be the perfect timing. We're looking at going through the book of Acts with Philip meeting the eunuch. The Ethiopian eunuch. What he was reading. Where he was at. When they were finished having the discussion, there happened to be water right there. This is not half and chance. This is the purposes of Yahweh rolling out. And when they roll out, they roll out so smooth. You think it's a struggle when you're getting there. Or as you're going through. But when you're done, you're like, wow. It was Yahweh that caused that. And Yahweh that caused this. We're looking at the persecution in the church. And how Yahweh used that to get the gospel to the world. They had it only in Jerusalem and Judea. 
The persecution did it a purpose. Yahweh used it for his purposes to make that gospel begin to spread out. Because they flee. They fled for their lives' sake, but they took the gospel with them. Ephesians 1. Interesting, same verses. I do love it. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Messiah, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. Again, Paul talking about this mystery. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. See, it was mystery before. We didn't understand what Yahweh wanted for us. I mean, we had the prophets and we had the prophecies, but it wasn't clear. We didn't understand. According to his good pleasure, which he has purposed, exhibited, determined in himself. See, Yahweh, it all started with Yahweh. He had a thought and he spoke a word. See, that's our Elohim. You have a thought, you speak a word, and everything's done. Everything is predetermined. It's set. And it's just going to roll out from there. It's just going to roll out. You know, we ponder and we've had men over the years, over the years, over the years, wondering, trying to tell us when Yahshua is coming back. Yahweh knows. And it will roll out as he has determined it to be. It all began with him and will end with him. This is why he's Alpha and Omega. He's the first and he's the last. It starts with him. It ends with him. Because he's the one who has purposed everything. And that's the big picture. And you're going to walk your walk. And you're going to walk your walk. And some things you may do contrary. But in the big picture, which is our next verse, maybe I should say that one. But in the big picture, Yahweh's going to use everything that transpires on this earth. We have our sister Eleanor who gets, you know, when she watches the news and sees all that's going on with the Middle East, she comes in, her heart is heavy. But she knows, bottom line, everything that's going on over there, Yahweh is purposing to set up what he is setting up. In all the governments, Nebuchadnezzar had to be shown, yes, you are a king, but guess what? I allow you to reign. I give you the rule. And when he forgot that, Yahweh had to put him in his place. And until he recognized that after his seven years of madness, that you know what? There is a God that's above all gods. His name is Yahweh, and he sets up rulers. Same Yahweh. You can look around and look at these vile dictators that are ruling countries and these corrupt officials. Don't think that Yahweh is surprised. It is all rolling out to Yahweh's purposes. That doesn't mean he wouldn't have all men to be saved, because the scripture clearly says that Yahweh would have all men to be saved. But that's not going to be the case. Yahweh's not going to make all men serve him, although he could. But he wants fellowship. And when you make somebody do something for you, there's no fellowship in that. So Yahweh has a purpose, a purpose of fellowship with his creation. So we're going through that course to that end intent. Now, we've looked at some of the purposes of Yahshua and why he came. For us, other than Ecclesiastes, which governs our whole life, there's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill.
hill, it's time to heal, it's time to break down, it's time to build up, it's time to weep, it's time to laugh, it's time to mourn, it's time to dance. It's time to cast away stones, it's time to gather stones, it's time to embrace, it's time to refrain from embracing. I mean, this is the whole course of your life. Right there, there's a time for all of that. You know, that in your course of your life, there'll be times to cry, there'll be times to, you know, rejoice, there'll be times to mourn and times to dance. There'll be time to be born and of the natural course and time to die. And there's a time for gathering in and there's a time for letting go. So this is, I mean, very clearly the course. And then Solomon says in verse 17, I said in mine heart, Elohim should judge the righteous and the wicked in a time of judgment. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. So the ultimate end is there is a time where Yahweh will judge. Now we know, especially for those in the household of faith, when we walk with Yahweh, we get judged along the way. That's where your conviction comes from and, you know, little chastisement. But there's an ultimate day of judgment. And Solomon is recognizing that. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Elohim, to them that are called according to his purpose. Now, you know, we'll sit there and we like to claim that. And it means just what it says. That horrid situation that you're in. Somehow Yahweh is going to use it for his purpose. If you're hit, now you've got, there's some condition, this is conditional. You know, Yahweh loves unconditionally, but there are conditions in walking the walk. You know, there's blessings and curses. So we know that all things will work out together for good to them that love Elohim. To them that are the called. See, I don't know about NIV right now, but King James. The called according to his purpose. So you've got to be the called. And this is a setting for, this is the showbread thing. So according to his purpose. So eventually it will all be exposed. It will be exposed and you'll see the good. You know, even when we, the bad choices that we make. Sometimes, you know, we don't avoid the snare of the enemy. We get stuck in something. That's okay. In the sense that your life isn't ruined. It's not over. Yahweh can make that work for good. And we're talking about Yahweh's good. We're not talking about you getting money and prosper. We're talking about the good of Yahweh. The good that benefits you eternally. You'll look back one day and see how it will be exposed on how it benefited you. Been there, done that. Wonder how, Yahweh, I didn't deserve this. I was good at this. I did that right. I did this right. But look. See, some things happen to you that are out of your hand. And you wonder, why me? And then you, after a little while, wow, Yahweh did this and he did that. And if I hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't have known. The songwriter says, you know, through it all. You know, if there had never been a problem, I wouldn't know he could solve them. So there's this good that comes out of these things that are happening in our lives to Yahweh's purpose. But it's an exposure. He's exposing it. Acts 11.23. I'll ask for a drink of water. Now this here is the church of Antioch, which, you know, they were scattered because of the persecution after Stephen. And Barnabas goes to this church. And because he hears of these good things that are going on there. So he goes, let me start with verse 22. Then Titus went with them and encouraged them. And he said, Brothers, I have found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And I have been appointed to the ministry of the gospel. 
tidings of these things came into the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch. Who then, when he came and had seen the grace of Elohim, was glad. You know, we ought to be glad when we come in and see the grace of Yahweh in other people's lives. Even if our life isn't going so smooth, it should make us rejoice. And he exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto Yahweh. So he's saying here that, and this purpose is the same thing, exposed before Yahweh, that our serving of Yahweh with open hearts, exposed, be exposed before Yahweh. You know, that's what he's saying to them. He was glad and he exhorted them that with purpose of heart they would serve Yahweh. Open heart, being exposed. Sometimes that's hard for us. But he's talking about being for real. When you are in the service of Yahweh, being used of Yahweh, you ought to come with purpose of heart. And not the purpose of heart of intent of what you're going to get, but being exposed, opened up to Yahweh. See, when you look at these, when you're reading and doing your studies, and you, please use a concordance, because I looked at just four different purposes, and they all have kind of similar in definition, but there was a little bit of difference in them. But this one with the exposed, you know, not that you would think of purpose as intent or goal, but to come before Yahweh exposed and open. And that's what he exhorted them. He encouraged them. He taught them. He preached at them to be, make sure your purpose before Yahweh, that you would have your purpose of your heart, that they would cleave unto Yahweh. So we can't cleave unto Yahweh if we're not open, if we're keeping something from him, which is only in our mind because we can't keep anything from Yahweh. Sometimes we're really stupid. But, you know, the all-knowing Elohim knows everything, but we think we're hiding things and keeping things. But we are. We're keeping them from him in the sense that we're not allowing him to get to those areas because he doesn't forcefully go to places you don't let him go. So if you've got past hurts and you don't expose them to him, he won't heal them. He can't heal them because you've hid them away. Although he knows they're there, he won't forcefully heal you of things that you're hiding from him. And so we will hide these things from him. We can't cleave to Yahweh when we do that. You know, and I've made the statement that our marriage, a natural marriage, is a picture of our relationship with Yeshua. For this cause will a man leave his mother and father to cleave unto his wife. You can't cleave unto Yahweh if you don't expose yourself to him. Everything. Just open it up, open heart. So this is what Barnabas is encouraging them to do. So our task is to line up our purposes with Yahweh's purpose. Even if we think our purposes aren't much, to remember that Yahweh has a greater purpose for us. Especially to our young, our teenagers, those that are coming up. You may be trying to set some purposes now in your life, in high school, and about to go into high school. You know, about what you want to do, what college you want to go to, your profession. You know, maybe the girls are thinking about getting married and having kids. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you don't want to leave Yahweh out of that. You want Yahweh's purposes to be first and foremost. You want your purposes to line up with Yahweh. And that's usually where we have a struggle. We forget to pray about things and ask Yahweh, should I take this job? Which, you know, may you put out a bunch of resumes and you get 20 callbacks. Well, which one? You can't obviously take them all. Or 
even if it's just two callbacks, which one now should I take? Sometimes we don't look at that. Which one pays more is the one we jump on. You know, or if the pay is about the same, which has potential to get more? You know, that's what we look at, and that's our natural course. But, you know, YOWI may want you to take the lower one, or, you know, there's a promotion offered to you, but YOWI doesn't want you to move on. We don't think about consulting YOWI. So we have to, that's our task. Our task is to line our purposes up with YOWI's eternal purpose. Because even though we're his child and we may make the wrong choice, we've wasted time. And we could have been further along had we consulted YOWI and lined our purposes up with his. Or put it on the course, the natural course that YOWI said, girls, you shouldn't have babies until you're married and can afford them, kind of afford them. But, you know, this natural course. We have already determined in past weeks that YOWI orders the steps of a righteous man, and even the valleys we enter in are picked by YOWI for his purposes. So even our valleys, YOWI has handpicked them for us, for a purpose he's working out in us for the greater purpose. And so, in closing, you know I have to have a song. I'm not going to sing it, but I'll do the chorus. The chorus says, at the altar, at the altar. For your service I live. For your purpose I give my life. And I lay it at the altar before you. And that should be our prayer. Thank you. Thank you.